Hello, this is Paul Pallas speaking. Um, I just wanted to briefly um, show this uh, video game. It's an RPG. It's entitled uh, Alyssa and Assassin's Chronicles. Uh, I designed this game about six years ago on the PS2. Uh, I was using a RPGM3 software, which was kind of handy. It had its limitations. Uh, I wasn't able to use my own music, and I couldn't use my own drawings. However, I had uh, absolute uh, control over the mathematics and um, the story, and uh, the layout of the maps and everything. Anyway, <coughs> and we just uh, after the brief introductory screen, uh, we just progressed to the subtitle screen. Uh, it's kind of generic. I could have done it a little better. Especially the font on the title, it kind of sucks. Um, as I said, there wasn't a whole lot that I could really do at this point. And um, I could have went back and tweaked it and everything, but at that point, uh, the PS3 was coming out and uh, the software was incomplete. Like, I only have five playable levels done. The entire story's done, and all the math was done, but. Um, I still had to draw out the maps and everything like that, and um, and I had to add more items, more monsters. But the idea was complete; like it was all in my head. So there was like five playable levels, and then by the time I got the fifth level programmed, uh, the PS3 had come out by then, and I kind of realized in the back of my head, like nobody's gonna play this fucking game, like nobody's gonna fucking care. In order to even run the software, you have to fucking you know, buy the disc, and then get a copy of the memory card that I dumped all the data onto, and it just simply wasn't worth it. Um, PlayStation has always had this uh, exclusivity. This anal fucking thing about them where if you program something on Sony, it's a real pain in the ass to port it to anything else besides a Sony machine. So, like, e even with a... Um, even with my techno music, like that was all programmed on on the PS2, and I had to, I had to buy like a hundred dollars worth of equipment just to, you know, have people enable, you know, enable people to listen to it and view the videos, you know, online, you know. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna redo this entire game, and I'm gonna just rewrite it for the PC. But uh, it's an interesting game. Um, the gameplay is very simplistic. It's kind of turn-based RPG. Nothing too complicated. Kind of like uh, Final Fantasy, sort of like generic and dumbed down. Um, I, I merely wanted to focus on the story. I wanted to make the story funny. I wanted I wanted to make it fucking entertaining as hell. And I think I, I did a good job of that. I made a very original story. And um, I, personally, I, I think it would be enjoyable to play. It, it'll be interesting to uh, port it onto a new system. I'll definitely have to uh, improve the graphics and everything, and you know, kind of make it kick ass. So this is the first town that you start out in. It's very lackluster, and um, I wanted to make it that way. That way, uh, when it, whenever you went out into the field, it would. You know, just just juxtapose, uh, juxtapose <laughs> against uh, you know the blandness of the first town. Um, you'd, you'd be assaulted by all these colors and shit whenever you get out into the field. Um, there are no good guys in this game. Uh, it's all bad guys. Even the main characters, they're all bad. Like I just wanted to portray the entire human race as a you know just shit, which basically it is. Um, and each character has her own uh, idiosyncrasies. Um, for example, whenever you run into these buildings, um, she basically the thief ransacks the cupboards. Like she's basically robbing the fucking house. You know, and I thought that was kind of funny. Um, also, uh, whenever you go into shops and then any of the towns, um, the criminal will randomly shoplift and basically steal items for the party. And I always thought that was kind of interesting. Um, oh yeah, those little red question marks, uh, they, they don't really appear in the game. Um, I'm in edit mode right now, so I'm going to be skipping around a lot, just to, you know, 
just to show off like all the different backgrounds and shit like that. Also, I uh, encourage anybody who plays this game to talk to all the townspeople. Almost every single character in the game has something fucking sick, twisted, or fucking flat out fucking funny to say. I'm serious, like I got a sick fucking sense of humor. And I put a lot of work into it. Also, uh, when you're in any town, um, your prostitute will randomly proposition male characters in the towns and um, basically take them back to behind the building, you know, give them a quick head job, quick fuck, you know, whatever. And uh, your party acquires gold in that manner. I thought that was an interesting dynamic to the game where you could actually do that. I wanted to make it kind of realistic, you know. And like all RPGs, um, most of your saving slash healing slash res resurrection is performed in the churches. There is a... the grossest character that I made in this game is uh, Edmonicus, and he's the Dark Priest. Um, I'll let the... <laughs> I'll let the joke on the screen speak for itself. Uh, he appears several times during the game, and uh, later in the game you do get to fight him as a boss. Uh, I think he's like the fourth or fifth boss, I'm not sure. Um, it, it is eight levels total, and I only have five playable levels that I'll be able to show you today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting, like... <laughs> I just wanted to prove that there was nowhere that I was unwilling to go, humor-wise. Like, shock humor, gross-out humor, whatever. Paul Palace is here to deliver, and I deliver in droves. This is the first field that your party will enter after leaving the first town. Um, I try to make everything aesthetically pleasing. Uh, no matter where you are on the map, and no matter what direction you're looking, everything just looks nice. And that's one of my goals when I made this game. And here's a demonstration of how the randomly generated uh, <clears throat> field battles go. I made it pretty fair. Um, you're not going to be interfered with it like every two steps or anything like that. And um, there's not a whole lot of farming involved. That's one thing I want to avoid. As long as you fight like 10 fights in each field, you'll have enough experience and gold to be able to defeat the bosses at the end of the levels. Just don't run from everything and pick everything up. Just investigate everything and your party will be fine. On each map there is a whole, there's a lot to explore. Uh, there are secret dungeons on every single map. And um, there's a lot of secret treasure. There's secrets all over the place. Uh, I'm just warping straight forward to uh, the Duke's uh, castle right now. Because uh, I'm just warping around in edit mode just to show everything. Anyway, <clears throat> so now you're inside uh, Varnoff's castle. This is actually an introductory level, so I guess there's like nine levels instead of eight, like I previously stated. Uh, there's an intro level, and then there's eight missions. So uh, anyway, you go through here. Uh, I'm not going to talk to everybody. However, I encourage all players, once again, to talk to everybody, because everybody has something funny or fucking flat-out fucking disgusting to say. And it's to me, it's like food for the soul. So... <laughs> This game is fucking hilarious, I forgot all half the shit that I read. <laughs> so, now you're inside the main part of the castle, and you're basically on route to the first boss. Um, as before, there's a lot to explore, which uh, I'm not gonna, going to do. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I just uh, I gave myself level 99 characters before I started this demo. That way I could just run through everything pretty much and just uh, give everybody the highlights of the game. Now the first boss is basically a test by your employer to see how strong your characters are and, and ascertain whether, whether or not you totally suck at role-playing games. Um, and then you can uh, you can talk to uh, Nadia first. She's 
she's basically um, your tour guide through the whole thing. She, she enables you to warp between levels and between worlds, and she gives you your missions and everything like that. Also, um, I, I'm very generous with save points. I wanted to make the game moderately difficult, but fair at the same time. You're not going to encounter a whole lot of backtracking through dungeons and things like that, and as I've enucleated before, there's not going to be a whole lot of level farming or gold farming. As long as you explore everything, you know, your characters will be okay. And I wanted to make all the bosses huge, you know, and monolithic almost. Um, I just wanted, I always wanted the party to look like the underdogs. And I think I was pretty successful in doing that. Um, oh, I got my, my old friend uh, Bud Miller over here. Hey Bud Miller, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, Bud? Oh, I'm doing okay. Um, so what do you think about this game? Oh, I don't know about that. That looks like one of their, their Dungeons and Dragons games. I heard that was Dungeons and Dragons is played by Satanists. And that's like unchristian. Well, I, I don't know, bud. I, well, what do you mean you don't know? You know you don't. Backwards head, motherfucker. Stupid fucking mathematician. Goddamn artists, dumbasses, fucking hippie views and shit. Well, bud, um, it's unfortunate that you feel that way. Well, if you want my opinion, I'm I don't give a good goddamn about your fucking opinion. I think you're a fucking asshole. God damn it, I'm gonna go fucking leave here and go feed my wife for a little while. Alright, bud, you go do that. So, anyway, um,. Yeah, I made everything fair, and I'm just using this as an opportunity to uh, show off like all the spells and stuff that I programmed. Obviously, these are high-level spells that would not ordinarily be accessible at this point in the game. But um, yeah, it's it's fun, you know, and all the battles are pretty much to the wire. Like you really have to take advantage of your healing abilities and potions and things like that. And your defensive capabilities. Uh, you have defensive spells, things like that, items. But it all levels out in the end. Mathematically, as I said, it's, it's fair. That's one thing that I wanted to do, is make an RPG that was mathematically, like, almost perfectly balanced. So after you defeat the boss, um, <clears throat> Nadia teleports you to the next world, and <laughs> and she's got big boobs. Oh yeah, they all have big boobs. I like boobs. Boobs good. Good boobs. So anyway, so yeah, that you're teleporting through space to the next level, and then there's boobs. <laughs> So the first level, or mission, as they're called, um, lands you in, in a town. Uh, basically this is a town run by scientists, the very last scientists on the planet. And you're going to encounter a lot of uh, mechanical beasts outside in the field. So ordinarily, you would want to go inside all these buildings, uh, talk to all the people, read my stupid fucking jokes, you know, stock up on laser weapons, which um, mechanical enemies are pretty much weak against. And I made everything colorful, you know, it's kind of nice to look at, it's nice eye candy. Um, there are a lot of chests and things to uncover. Uh, when you go out into the field, it's like this um, post-nuclear wasteland, but it's still like really beautiful though. Like I, I tried to add a lot of color to uh, the loneliness and the devastation of the field. And it's just nice to look at. 
and you run around, kick ass, you know, beat up monsters. Oh, also, uh, if you talk to Nadia, who's who's at the beginning of every quest, if your party is weakened, uh, she'll restore all your HP MP for the entire party. I forgot to mention that. So this is one of the secret dungeons. Actually, this dungeon was uh, this secret dungeon is actually on the introductory level. It's hidden in the forest on the upper eastern uh, corner of the map. I just wanted to uh, just demonstrate, you know, how much went into this. It's a, you know, it's basically like a mini dungeon, and then you fight like a little mini boss, and usually you get rewards. Uh, I think for this boss, if you defeat the wizard at the end of this dungeon. Um, he gives you a scroll, which enables your wizard to learn an ice spell. Which comes in handy, you know. He's just this miserable, mean old fucking man, living in a goddamn cave. You know, and he's like... And he's like, you know, talking shit to the characters and everything like that. You know, it's kind of funny. But he's just this miserable, mean old prick. You know, and he's like hoarding this fucking scroll that he's never gonna fucking use. So I'm gonna use my 99 level characters to kick his geriatric ass and fucking snatch the goddamn scroll from him. How about that? Yeah, that's right, you mean old fucking man. Die! So, yeah, that's one of the quote unquote secret levels. One of the many secret levels that uh, you encounter during the game. And it's like a little bonus boss and stuff like that. It's just nice to explore the world. I made it kind of non-linear, but linear at the same time. So I'm skipping around a little bit here. Um, went back out in the field. Um, on route to the to your first mission. It's the tower. There are two giants in the tower that you have to defeat. Uh, I'm only going to fight one of them. Uh, the, the, the last one. And, uh, yeah, here's a random encounter, you know, lots of different monsters all in the field, different, um, different combinations, different types of monsters that you encounter at any given time. And, uh, if I recall, I think the tower is pretty big. It's big, but it's not that complicated. I think it's seven floors high, and maybe there's a sub-basement or something. I'm not entirely certain. It's been a really long time since I programmed this. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty big dungeon. But it's pretty cool in there. It's nice. Big C. So this is the inside of the Giant's Tower. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole dungeon, obviously. I'm just going to skip around and then just go right up to the boss. It's pretty nice. Um, I like the music. I, I would have preferred to write my own musical scores for this, but the computer wouldn't let me. That, that's one of the limitations of the software. So anyway... Oh wait! Looks like I have a visitor. Oh, <laughs> it's Bud Miller Sr. What are you doing here, Bud Miller Sr.? <laughs> I'm looking for the milkman! <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry, Bud Miller Sr., but uh, the milkman uh, does not visit my house. I go out and buy my own fucking milk. Uh, because I'm not a cripple, you dumb old man. <laughs> you rude little rat scallion! I should beat you with my fucking cane! <laughs> After I eat! And take my back pills! <laughs> so anyway, what are you doing here, Bud Miller Sr.? Is that you, Frank? I thought you died in the war! <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's Paul Palace, Bud Miller Sr. You walked into the wrong apartment again. Go home. Uh, Bud Miller Sr., it's just a game. It's not real. Uh, the giant on the screen cannot hurt you. 
That's it, get out, go. Go. Is it you, Frank? No, it's not Frank! Leave, you mean old fucking man! So, um. That's pretty much how this boss fight goes. As before, these boss fights are a lot more lengthy than this. I, I just have these beefed up characters that I'm using. So, I pretty much, um. Defeat the giant and then progress onward through the story. That's pretty much all there is to it. It is a long dungeon in Final Pope, but whenever I skip around with like, different levels and stuff, it takes like a good hour just to walk through the thing. But, you know, I'm fair with save points and shit. And, uh, this is another boss. This is one of my personal favorites, uh, <clears throat> out of all my creations. I call him the Sewage Merman. Uh, basically, um, the town above, the sewers, uh, where he where he dwells, it's um, populated by magic users. And every time a, a magic user takes a dump and flushes it down the toilet, uh, the Sewage Merman eats the poop and learns all the wizard's spells and gains their power. So over the years, the sewage merman, you know, grew to, into like this giant merman sewage wizard thing, and he tries to beat the crap out of your party. It's an interesting boss, you know, it's kind of humorous. Well, anything that eats poop is funny, you know, and you got a merman and he eats poop and he learns spells by eating poop, and that's a... Uh, I'm not gonna go through the entire fight, I just wanted to show off like uh, show off this boss. I thought it was an interesting creation of mine. I'm definitely keeping it. I might make some subtle changes uh, to the new software whenever I, whenever I make it, but um, I'm definitely keeping this character. Yeah, yeah, this this guy deserves to survive. That's <laughs> <laughs> And what RPG would be complete without a zombie level? Uh, basically, um, this is a graveyard. The snow is supposed to be nuclear snow. And that's what's uh, reanimating all the corpses and turning them into fucking zombies. And they all come after you and they try to eat you and stuff. And it's very Halloween-y. It's kind of depressing almost. I don't know. But it, it's nice. I, I tried to make the music fit the mood, sort of. Uh, an interesting part of this uh, of this level, which I'm not going to go too much into depth, but uh, the prostitute attempts to um, fuck a zombie. And uh, that doesn't turn out too well for her. She ends up getting poisoned. Aww. And this is another level. Um, obviously, as you can see, there's a lot to explore in this world. Each level probably takes about, I don't know, two hours to really cover each one. So you're looking at about, if you if you know exactly where to go, the whole game would be at least 40 hours long. But it's, it's a nice sized game. So uh, I've been skipping back and forth here. Uh, this is the part of the story where you finally get to defeat Admonicus, the fucking Chester. Uh, his first form is just his uh, priest form, and after that he transforms into this demon. And then after that, after that uh, part of the story, uh, Admonicus is gone for good. I think that's was that the third one, one, two, three. Yeah, he's the fourth boss. And then, then there's the zombie level, and then there's uh, the Ukrainian border, and then two more levels after that. And I don't want to spoil the end of the end of the game, so I'm not going to tell you who the last boss is. But it's interesting. Um, there are a lot of good ideas uh, for this game. Uh, for example, like during the 
during the Giant's Tower, you come across the sword, and the criminal and the main character in the party start fighting over the sword. So you actually have to uh, fight one of your own characters just to, you know, proceed with your quest and acquire the weapon. And I don't think you have to bring her back to life. Like, after you kill her, like, she just comes back with one hit point. But then you can, like, uh, basically heal her, you know, with, um, with either your wizard or your prostitute. You can use a healing spell on her and get her back up to max. I didn't want to force, like, players to, like, backtrack through the whole dungeon just because they lost one character. You know, that, that would be stupid. So it's a pretty straightforward fight. Um, it'll be interesting to redo this game, and it is fun software to use, and it's very e it's very easy. It's a uh, RPG Maker 3. It came out on uh, PlayStation 2. Uh, my only qualms with it, um, as before, I couldn't use my own drawings. I, none of the drawings are mine. And um, I couldn't use my own music. Um, but uh, all the maps, all the mapping was mine. All the, all the mathematics, all the items, all the monster descriptions, um, different attributes, uh, position of treasure, and most of all the story. As a matter of fact, before I redo this game, I might have to. To replay the whole thing, just because I, I don't even remember half the shit that I typed in. I'm sure it's fucking hilarious. It's fucking sick. But um, and it's very easy to use. There's very little mathematics involved. Um, there's no coding. It's all uh, object-oriented programming. Uh, all the programming is basically events. So basically, it's all point and click. It's very easy to use. And there are a lot of options too. But I basically simplified a lot of things to save on memory space to make a long game and to um, basically take advantage of um, all the different backgrounds and things like that. But there, there's a lot of freedom involved. It's, uh, it's a good way to exercise one's creative muscles. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. Uh, this, is a, this is a taste of what I'm going to start doing whenever I um, Whenever I launch my, my game site, I'm going to start programming again. I'll start out with some SMD, but I'm definitely going to be this RPG. Have a nice day, everyone.